Welcome to Statistics in Excel number 68. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook, Business 210, Chapter 6. Hey, we're talking about normal Bell probability distribution. Hey, this is a continuous random variable, and this is its probability distribution. Now, this can be thought of um, uh, from the histogram we studied in chapter 2. Hey, this is a plot of scores. These are quiz results for chapter 5 probability. And here it is. That kind of looks like a bell shaped. Now, in this textbook, we didn't learn how to do a uh, frequency polygon, but imagine if we had a line here connecting all these. That would be kind of bell shaped. Right here, this is that exactly, that bell-shaped. It's really just a frequency polygon uh, uh, plotted uh, with area underneath. Now, uh, there's lots of characteristics, and I have a list on the next place. But for instance, the area under uh, the curve is equal to 1. Directly down the middle, this side is exactly identical, symmetrical to this side. That means broop, down the middle, all the area here is 0.5. All the area here is 0.5. Add it all up equals 1. Now, mean, median, and mode, we talked about in numerous chapters already, that when we get skew equal to 0, which is a bell-shaped curve, then mean equals median equals mode. Now, this curve theoretically extends in this direction down to negative infinity and on this direction up to positive infinity. Now, right about here, there'll be one standard deviation, which is z1, two z, uh, z st uh, two, and z3. That would be three standard deviations above the mean. You get out into here, three, four, five, highly unlikely. If you know anything about the financial crisis of 2007, 8, 9, some of those banks and insurance companies and financiers said that they were getting 25 standard deviation occurrences, which don't really ever happen, which means that they were using a bell-shaped curve as their model inappropriately. Hey, uh, uh, let's scroll down here. There's lots of different uh, normal probability distributions. You can see some of them here. This is for weight of cereal boxes. This has uh, 250 grams with a standard deviation of 2. This is 300 grams with a standard deviation of 3 grams. <coughs> Excuse me. Notice as the standard deviation gets a little bit bigger, this will get a little bit flatter and more spread out. I have a great example over in Excel in just a moment. Here's salaries, right? Uh, the average salary is 3,000, uh, standard deviation of 400. Notice how it's like that. Here's uh, average salary 3,000, but standard deviation of 100. A lot taller, right? So the standard deviation will determine the height uh, of the distribution and how flat it is. Let's go to our next page here. I want to just uh, go through this kind of list of important uh, characteristics of our probability distribution. There's lots of different normal distributions. Mu determines the location and standard deviation, the height or the shape. Highest point is in the middle, bloop, mean, median, mode. Uh, mean can be any value. It could be negative 10, 0, or 10, right? Uh, four normal curves are symmetric. Both sides are 0.5. All the area underneath is uh, 1. Uh, standard deviation determines the shape or height. We already mentioned that. All the area is 1. Half of the area is 0.5. We mentioned that. And normal random variable. Oh, this is our empirical rule or normal rule. Remember this? 60, approximately 68% of the values are within plus or minus one standard deviation. Notice this rule is given 68% plus or minus one standard deviation. Oh, that's why it's so convenient to calculate z, because z tells us how many standard deviations. 95.4 within plus or minus two standard deviations. 99.7, uh, I think in some of my uh, drawings, I put 68, 95, 99, even though this one should probably be rounded to 100. But you get the idea, those are estimates, one, two, three, plus or minus standard deviations. And finally, number eight, cannot calculate probability for a particular x only between 
two x values. We've only already mentioned that a few times, but it is worth, uh, ooh, I think this is off to the side here, so you couldn't see that. So hopefully you can see that right there. All right, let's go to our next uh, page. Ooh, the normal probability density function. Remember, that doesn't calculate probability. It's just the height, and it helps us define the whole curve. Ooh, there it is. Ah, but luckily we don't have to type that out. Oh, but it's fun to type out in Excel. Uh, here's the variables. Uh, we're going to use functions built into Excel. Uh, we need to talk about the standard normal probability distribution. There's the function for it. I'm going to go to a couple slides ahead. This is page 12. We've already done this. This is what we did in chapter 3. Uh, chapter 3, we calculated z-score. Remember, an x minus a particular x-bar divided by standard deviation? Well, in this chapter, we're, we can't use sample data. Uh, later chapters, we'll learn how to use sample data, because we have to, because most data is sample data. But here's, um, we call this z-score here. We're going to call this, ah, the standard normal random variable, number of standard deviations above or below the mean. Same as before, but using population data. Uh, population mean, population standard deviation, x minus. Awesome, because it really standardizes. If it's a normal curve, as we saw in an earlier video, remember we had 11, a score of 11 on your test with a standard deviation of 1 with a mean 12. And then we did a score of 10 with a standard deviation of Two, we got the same exact probability. Well, that's what's so nice about this because we'll be able to convert. Actually, you know, in Excel it doesn't matter. In the old days it really did help a lot to have Z, but now we have functions for everything, so it doesn't matter if you use Z or not. But this textbook does, and and we and I'll show you both ways. Uh, we're gonna have to uh, convert. If we have our example, which is uh, back here, right there. Statistics quiz equals 20 points. The population mean was 12. That's from all past uh, quizzes. Standard deviation was 2. Here would be the shape of our distribution. Again, the, our normal or empirical rule applies. There would be our x's. And here's our z's. But let's uh, see how to calculate our z's here. We did this before. Uh, there's all of our, our x values, 10, 12, 14, and 17. We simply convert to number of standard deviations above or below. So 10 is minus 1. Yeah, 1 below. Uh, what's 12? If you got a score of 12, how many standard deviations are you away from the mean? 0. How about 14? You're 1 above. How about 17? Man, you did great. 2.5 standard deviations above the mean. So z scores. Let's go over to Excel. Here's our histogram. We're going to use this data, mean, mean, median, mode, all equal 12, skew 0, and standard deviation 2. Now imagine if this did look normal, right? We click over on the Sheet tab, Normal, and there it is, 12 standard deviation. Now, rem remember, we've this is the third or fourth or fifth time, area in Excel will always be calculated from uh, whatever the smallest is. In our case, it, it really theoretically extends forever. So negative infinity to 10. So if we want to calculate the probability less than or equal to 10, it's that area. Now, this is all set up. So if I say now a score of 8, the probability of getting a score, you could see how it's, the area is very small here. Um, that would be two standard deviations below the mean. There's the area. Now, what if you wanted to say the probability of 14 or less? Oh, there it is, all that probability. And that's the way the Excel functions will calculate. What if you wanted the area above here? Well, you'd calculate using our functions. Instead of binom dist, we're going to use norm dist or norm s dist. You just calculate, you plug your, your x in here, 14, right? But if you want the upper area, you'll have to say 1 minus all of that. All right. Now we want to talk about the family of normal probability distributions. We have mean, standard deviation. Both of those define the shape or height and the location. If I change this right here, notice it's from 2, or, or the mean median mode is at 12. If I change the mean to 24, watch what happens before I hit Enter. Watch what happens down here, Enter. 
So now it just the curve is exactly the same shape. It just moved up to 24. If I make it 50, notice the shape is still the same. So mean with the same standard deviations, me, different means with same standard deviation just moves along, same shape. Now let's go back to 12. Now if we change the standard deviation, if I change it to 1, what does that mean? There's less variation. It means all of the data points are more clustered around the mean. So when I change it to 1, it better, it better in essence scrunch and get taller. So I hit Enter. And sure enough, that's what it did. Now, if I make it 3, that means it's more spread out. More There's fewer data points clustered around the mean. So when I do 3, it'll become flatter and less tall. So these, the mean the standard deviation define the shape and uh, the location. Let's do one other thing. I'm going to change this to 2. Um, and we'll change that to, we'll leave that 14. Notice the area of this and below is 84. But now, let's change this to 1. Right now, 14 is how many standard deviations above 12? Exactly 1, because the standard deviation is 2. So if I change standard deviation to 1, and I change, notice it's 84.1, and I change this to 13, what do we get? The same exact probability. So that's a, just a, a way of seeing that the normal distribution in terms of standard deviations is really the same. All right, and that's how come z's will work. Let's go look at our z's. Here I've plotted this. This is the same data, test score of actual 10. Our mean is 12 and our standard deviation 2. And we're asking the question, what's the probability of getting 10 or fewer points for our score or randomly selected score? Uh, so we have that area equals probability. Here's all the x's, but here's the z's. And the textbook tends to stick more to the z's. I'm going to do both. I'm going to give you uh, three solid examples or four solid examples of how to do calculations. And I'm going to show you both for each of them. Really, when you have Excel, it doesn't, doesn't matter which one uh, you need to use. But look, 12, why is the z equal to 0? Because 12 minus 12, there is uh, the standard deviation. We're 0 standard deviations away. Here's that 14 compared to 12, exactly one standard deviation. There's that 10. Compared to this mean with the standard deviation 2, minus 1 below. All right, so that is the standard normal curve. I just put the x on since you're, uh, it helps to see both as you're learning this. When we come back in our next video, we're going to look at three, one, two, three examples. We're going to see how to calculate area below. So we'll be asking questions like, what's the probability of 10 or less? Then we'll see how to calculate what's the probability of 15 or above, and then we'll be calculating the probability between two values. So we'll be asking, for example, what's the probability between uh, tw 10 and 14? And those are our three examples. And then we'll see how to find x with when you have a, a normal probability distribution. See you next video.